Hello all, today we'll be discussing about a very important project uh, which is called as, uh, you know, predicting diabetes with the help of Pima diabetes data set. And this particular data set I've actually downloaded from Kaggle. Uh, this is the URL from where you can download it. And you can also find a lot of information about this particular data set and what are the basically the features in this particular data set like pregnancies, whether the number of times, how many times a lady was actually pregnant. Uh, glucose, blood pressure, skin thickness, and different type of features. And finally, one. Uh, then you also have information like insulin and BMI. And finally, your outcome is basically your uh, output feature, which is either zero or one. So let me just uh, you know read this particular data set and show you how the data set looks like. Uh, I'll be uploading this particular uh, you know code material in the GitHub, and I'll be sharing with the link uh, along with the data set. So make sure you watch this video till the end because uh, I'd faced some challenges in order to improve the accuracy. Uh, I have actually used XGBoost algorithm to this. Uh, initially, I tried with random forest. I was getting a little bit less, but after applying XGBoost with hyperparameter optimization, I was able to get a good accuracy. So to begin with, what I'm doing is that initially import all the necessary libraries that you basically have like pandas, matplotlib, numpy, because this particular libraries will be useful. You know, pandas will basically be useful for reading the data set, matplotlib for visualization stuff, and numpy is in order to create arrays. So as soon as you read the data set, it is present inside my data folder. Similarly, you just have to just download the code from the GitHub. Uh, the data set will also be provided over. And now in this particular data set, you have something like 768 records and you basically have 10 features. You have features like number underscore pregnancy, glucose underscore power, and other other features like insulin, thickness, BMI, age, skin, and finally your output feature, which is like diabetes, which will be either true or false. So you have all these features into this, and and these are the different features and values that are present in the particular data set. And total number of records are 768. So let us see first of all what I have done in feature engineering. Uh, I've also done some correlation, uh, you know, try to find out the correlation between these features. So uh, initially to begin this, guys, these are all your independent features to the skin and diabetes is basically your in, uh, dependent feature itself. So the first step, what I've done is that first of all, I've checked whether any null value is present in the data set. Always remember in feature engineering, you have to do this as a first step you have to go and check whether you're having any null values in your data set or not. And then the second step is basically finding the correlation in your features. In order to see the correlation, I'm basically using um, data.cor with with some color, uh, I mean, with some color mapping, which is basically given by your CMAP. So here I'm basically using uh, Seaborn, uh, which will be actually using heat map in order to see different, different colors and how much the data is basically correlated. So as soon as you execute this, you will be able to see that this type of correlation you'll be getting. Uh, you just still only want this kind of values what you can do is that you can just write data.corr correlation, okay? And this will actually give you all the correlation values. Um, and this particular correlation, most probably it is between Z, uh, minus one to plus one. So all the correlations are basically over here, okay? Now, remember guys, over here, your output feature is basically having the uh, values like true or false, okay? So I need to convert this true or false into zeros and ones. So for that, I'm just creating a mapping function. So I have written as diabetes underscore map, which is my variable here. I've considered true is equal to one, false is equal to zero. And then what I'm doing is that I'm taking data diabetes dot map with respect to this particular dictionary that I've actually created. So as soon as I apply to this and see the head part, you can see that this particular diabetes column has got converted into ones and zeros. Okay. So why I've done this because my output independent feature had true and false. So make sure you make it as one and zeros because your machine learning and logarithm and uh, will be understanding this type of values only as a category feature. Okay. And then what I'm doing is that I'm trying to find out oh, whether my data set is balanced or not. So first of all, I'm trying to see that wherever my data of diabetes was true, okay, or whether it is one, I'm just going to take that length of that many records. And when the data of diabetes was false, I'm going to take that many length. And after taking the length, I'm just trying to find out the count. And here, the true count is basically 268. The false count is basically 500. And now this looks like, uh, you know, you will be considering that your data set uh, of zeros and ones are like 50, 100 ratio. That is basically one is to two, approximately one is to two. Uh, but it is fine. This will work with respect to the uh, algorithm that I'm basically applying. This is not exactly an balanced data set. 
because you have sufficient amount of data for true and false both kind of diabetes uh, whether the person is having diabetes or he is not having the diabetes so for those scenarios i am having this many requirements okay so what i am doing is that after that i am trying to do the train test split before doing the train test split i am just taking all my independent features at one variable and my dependent features over here in my predicted class and then i am creating my dependent and independent features x is basically my independent feature y is basically my dependent features and then i'm doing train test split so these are all my train test split features i have x y test size 0 0.30 and random state is equal to 10 so as soon as i put this i'm basically doing a train test split uh, in this train test split i'm basically getting all the values okay now train test is basically done you know so that i can just apply my machine learning algorithm do the training on that particular data and for the test data i'll try to see the predicted results and results and what is the accuracy so for this i'm basically doing but before that i also want to see that suppose if this features has zero values what i have to do see some of the features in this what i have observed is that there is some values like zeros okay like you can see their thickness is zero okay insulin is zero uh this is zero this is zero okay so in this scenario this this data is basically not captured we can basically understand that uh, this all features should have some values right so it cannot just be zero so for that case what i'm doing is that uh here it is i'm just trying to find out how many missing zeros are present with respect to all the features that i have considered like insulin bmi simple i've just taken data.log of that particular uh, feature if it is zero i'm just calculating the length okay uh this particular condition i'm just checking it out and you can see over here total number of rows are to, uh, 768 how many no rows are missing uh, i mean the glucose content is basically zero there are five rows you can see over here how many rows of di uh, diastolic uh, underscore bp this is zeros they are 35 how many insulins are zeros so basically how many records has insulin as zero they are around 374 so i have to apply an imputation function and the imputation function over here basically i'm going to apply is mean okay so for that uh, what you have to do is that you have to import the library from sklearn.preprocessing import imputer in imputer i'm saying that wherever my missing value is zero i'm going to apply the strategy of mean with respect to that particular feature and i'm just trying to replace it for replacing it what i'm doing i'm just using uh, fill underscore values dot fit transform x train and x test okay so as soon as i do this automatically my train and test will actually get transformed uh, where all my zeros will get replaced with the mean okay so that is how i'm actually doing it. okay now after this uh, once you do this this is the imputation part you are replacing zeros with something else okay so for that what i'm doing is that i'm now using random forest classifier that is basically an ensemble approach and my random forest classifier i'm just taking some random state value and then i'm doing random forest on this model dot fit here i'm giving x train and y train dot ravel okay make sure you give this dot ravel because it is basically giving you some warnings if i don't give this um after that what you can do is that you can just predict on the x test data and finally i'm getting an accuracy of 71 percent okay 71 percent now same thing i tried to do with xgboost and i tried to check whether the accuracy was increasing or not so for that case what i've done i've taken some parameters with some hyperparameter optimization i've used randomized search cv and XGBoost is imported. You can see over here, randomized search CV. I've taken classifier, parameter distribution as this is my parameters I've taken up. Okay, scoring. What is the type of scoring I'm going to use? And underscore jobs is equal to minus one. I've basically used because I want all my processes in my laptop to get used. Uh, CV cross validation value is taken as five and verbose value. Here is my timer function, which will actually uh, calculate the time, how much time this uh, uh, random search, this randomized search CV will take. You know. So here I'm doing this random underscore search dot fit. You can see over here. And here while doing fit, I'll just give instead of X comma Y, I'm just going to give X train, X underscore train and Y underscore train dot travel. Okay. So I'll just execute it. Now you see that how much time it will take. Okay. Uh, it is just going to take uh, some amount of time. So yes, now it is done in 4.9 seconds. You can see over here, let us just check the best fit, best estimator. So this is my best estimator that has been selected. I'll just copy this over here and I'll again create my classifier with the help of this. So here it is. Okay, I'm getting some error. Okay, I have not used XGBoost. So let me put XGB classifier. So here it is. See, it is very simple. You find out the best estimator. 
then you just use this directly paste it over here and create your classifier okay and then you can then use your cross val score cross val score of x train dot comma y underscore train dot travel and i'll do the cross validation of 10 it will take some time so here is my accuracy various accuracy and finally when i do the mean i'm basically getting a 77 percent now see initially in random forest i got 71 percent if you remember right now that is what happens if you do hyperparameter optimization with xgboost you're able to get 77 okay. so this was all about uh you know uh uh Diabetes prediction. What you can do is that after this, you can use the same classifier, and you. Can... I'll just make this as code. You can just use xg classifier dot predict for my x test data. And now you can just take a uh, y underscore pred as your variable, and you can just. I'm just getting some errors. What is the error? Mm -hmm -hmm. So before this, uh, after this, what I'll do is that I'll just write classifier dot fit on my x underscore train comma y underscore train. That is the error that I'm getting because here you can see that I've directly used uh, you know cross val score but i have not used fit cross val score will internally do it but i want to do the fit separately for my classifier what i'll do is that i'll just write classifier dot predict and here i'm going to give my x test and this will basically my underscore test equal to sorry y underscore pred this is my predicted result so here it has got executed perfectly what i'll do is the next step i'll just say from i'll just create my confusion matrix i've already imported i guess uh, no, i'm not imported it so i'll write from sklearn dot metrics i'm going to import confusion matrix comma my accuracy score okay so here i'll say confusion matrix uh, Yes, confusion matrix. I'm going to take confusion matrix in here. I'm going to basically give my y underscore test y underscore spread. And finally, I'll just also find out my score, which will basically be my accuracy score. And here I'm going to take y underscore test, y underscore spread. So this is basically calculating your confusion matrix. So I'm going to print the CM and I'm also going to print my here you can see that uh, for my test data it is giving me 74 percent accuracy and this is how my confusion matrix looks this is all about diabetes prediction guys uh, i hope you like this particular video if you like it please do subscribe to the channel make sure uh, you know you press the bell icon so whenever i upload any videos get the notification um and yes that's it uh, i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead never give up keep on learning see you all in the next video thank you one and all god bless you all